as censorship looms over big tech, I feel less and less connected with the general public than ever. Sure, I can go to my, my circles of friends. I can go to all of these echo chambers and know how they feel. But how close are they to the general public? I don't know. And as censorship shows itself in more and more places, how are we to know how far... I mean, it really starts to feel like uh, you're supposed to believe a very particular thing and if you don't, well, then you belong in this group over here. You, know, you must say all these these things here that back up these things here, or you're in this group, this group over here. You're in the, 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 the deplorables group over here. And after a while, it starts to feel like even if you question any of these things, and don't even say it publicly, you don't question it publicly, that, well, I, do I belong in this group over here? And I understand that people will be like, well, but... But Kazoom, uh, these are these are private companies. They're able to mod they're moderating their their content on their platforms. You know what? I agree. They they they're under the same rules. Like if I started a website and I allowed people to comment on that website, I would be fully within my right to moderate the comments on that website if I didn't like what what was being posted. Fully within my right, and large companies have the same rights. Now, if we're going to argue that large companies shouldn't have those same rights, I'll be right with you. I'll say, yes, let's, let's regulate these companies. That sounds like a good plan. But then, uh, if you word it that way, the people are like, well, no, no, it's not like that. It's the, the First Amendment, and they'll go on on some long rant and just like, dude, it's you want the government to regulate these companies and tell them that they cannot censor people for their viewpoints. They can censor, uh, you know, spam. They can censor, uh, uh, you know, uh, porn. They can censor uh, in, in all, all sorts of, of things in, in those realms. But they can't censor people for uh, having different viewpoints. But then, but then you have all the people on the left that would be saying, well, well, there are some things that, uh, and, and not even just people on the left, it's just people on the other side of the argument that would be saying, well, if you, if you let these kinds of mindsets just have their say and they propagate, and they're the types of arguments that you can't really argue against, like, like people who ha try to save, you know, flat earth theory, you know, nothing you say will, will will make any difference to them. No amount of proof will be good enough. You know? And the same goes with these types of arguments. The same goes with this type of stuff. You know, well, how, how can you prove that, that uh, uh, you know, without a doubt that uh, the vaccine doesn't contain and you name some product that has some poison? How, how, do you, how do you absolutely prove without a doubt you know, they're they're not uh, listing everything in such and such a way, right? You know, oh, how how can you how can you not how can you disprove that there's some sort of mind control serum or a a tracking device or named anything under the sun that you could think of, right? Yeah, how 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 can you prove that's 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 not not in uh, these things? You know, oh, how how can you prove that the the uh. COVID tests aren't actually giving you something. How can you prove that? How can you prove, uh, yeah, how, how do you prove that? People want to come up with these outlandish theories. Yeah, how do you prove them wrong? No amount of facts you give them are going to get, prove anything to them. That's not going to be good enough for them. There's really, there, there's some, some sort of life incident has to knock these people out of those kinds of thought patterns. I mean, yeah, we can, we can give them a lot of, uh, uh, things that will, you know, once they start to realize, then they'll, they'll think about all the things they've been told and go, oh, shit, I guess they were right. But uh, nothing we, we say is going to be the thing that's just going to just suddenly shake them out of it. So if we allow those kinds of things to flourish, those kinds of mindsets to flourish and propagate... They will take over the thought, uh, you know, mainstream stuff. It would, it would most definitely take, be much more popular than 
any of the mainstream uh, media stuff. It's more enticing. It's, it draws people in more. Those types of things make people think that they know something other people don't. So it's, it's, so, I mean, how would we stop that with, I mean, people could say, well, let's stop this with, uh, you know, with good arguments. Yeah. As I said, uh, good arguments don't mean, mean shit to these people. Nothing you say is going to mean anything to these people. They'll believe in, in just about everything that isn't mainstream and say that anything mainstream is fake news. And, and what do you do? And then there, some of they, them will have the mindset, well, you know, if, if, uh, if, if their ideas spread faster, then maybe their ideas are right. And they're not. I mean, you could, you, this could happen with any sort of conspiracy theory, no matter how ridiculous. Like I said, flat earth theory. So it puts us in quite a predicament. The end result being more echo chambers, more people going to the underground where they learn how to become more radical, and people becoming disconnected from kind of the heartbeat of culture, of society. How do they know what, how, how does anyone know at a certain point, you know, what's the general consensus on things? Do, do we now, would, do, would we eventually just need it spoon fed to us by media? And then if you question any of it, you're, you get punished in some way. Like I'm looking like just like 10 years from now. What, what are things going to be like 10 years from now? Is the censorship going to wane a bit? You know, when the, when the conspiracies aren't as crucial to keep down? Probably not. It's probably just going to keep getting worse. And I can understand people being concerned that uh, this is getting very 1984. Yeah, T.J. Kirk, the amazing atheist. Maybe you're going to get your way, but not in quite the way that you wanted, not in quite the way that you had pushed. It, it's not going to be, you know, very qualified scientists doing this stuff. It's going to be other people. You sure propagated the idea of a sort of a ministry of truth. You know, there's a notion to trust the mainstream like religious people get taught to trust their pastors. You know, trust the word of God in every situation. You know, don't question any of it. I, I, I'm just right now, I'm thinking about how I fell for the uh, Joe Rogan horse paste stories. You know, so many places were reporting it that way that I thought that that was the way that he managed to get the medication. And, you know, since it's not normally prescribed for COVID, it's not approved for that. So it has to be an off, uh, uh, off label use, right? And it hasn't been proven. Now, the thing that I, that I was, you know, making the, trying to make some of the big point was someone who says, oh, no, I don't need the vaccine. I should, I don't need the vaccine. And then they get sick and, uh, and then take something that hasn't been proven to work. It's, it's very, very experimental. It's not even designed for it, right? You know, there, there's, there's some double standards or hypocrisy there. But, uh, yeah, I had to push the notion of, of him, you know, oh, it's horse pace. No, it was prescribed. But so many of the stories out there were pushing it as if it was horse paste. Now, there's the worry... There is the worry that, you know, if he pushes to take this sort of thing, then it will lead to people taking horse paste because the doctors, their doctors aren't going to give them that medication. So, or, or are likely not going to, or they can't afford to go to a doctor to be able to do that because of our shitty healthcare system that lets so many people fall through the cracks but just the fact that I, I, I was believing, I, I mean, you see so many stories saying the same thing. Usually it's true. You know, sometimes it's not. This time it wasn't. You know, the fact that I didn't think it was fishy, the notion of Joe Rogan, you know, taking something like that. I mean, yeah, I, I don't have a, that great of a view of, of Joe Rogan. You know, yes, I'm biased. So what? If I would have just continued to take mainstream's word for that, I would still be believing that Joe Rogan took horse paste. So it's an example of something where 
we should be questioning media, but the way everything is going, it's basically pointing in this direction of, no, just trust everything mainstream media says, and if you question it, you hate facts, or you hate science, or you hate, uh, or you're pushing alternative facts, or, or whatnot, right? You know, when, when things start to turn into, no, no, trust us, trust us, we're the ones who know the real information, trust us, when that starts to be said, I start to not trust. That's the way I am now. Wasn't the way I was when I was little, but uh, after I broke out of religion, it certainly became a, a thing for me. Yeah, let's, let's not just trust. Though sometimes I have, obviously, like with the thing I just mentioned, the ivermectin stories and Joe Rogan. But I just don't like the direction this is going. You know, trust us or get your information from the underground where nothing can be validated, nothing can be... It, 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 just it, everything that anyone says is just as valid as anything else, is just as truthful, is just as filled with facts as anything else. How disconnected are we going to become to what the general consensus is on so many things? How many people are big tech going to essentially try to throw away? How many people are we going to essentially throw away from society because they believe in stupid things? Or they believe in things that could hurt people? No, I, I don't like where this is going. I mean, with all these people who just think that, that anything that brings us towards the left... Oh, they, they mentioned this guy from... I think about that former guy from the KGB. Can't remember what his name was. He talks about subversion. All that that really does is put into people's heads the notion that anything that brings us towards the left in any way, anything that makes us question our current way of life, is communism. So we should remain center-right the entirety of this country, and anyone who wants us to move anywhere towards the left should just, no, no, you should forget about that. We're center-right, oh, damn it. You know, we're going to throw a fit if we, if we, if you try to move us towards the center, we're going to throw a fit, right? I don't know. With, 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 with all these people who have that kind of belief, perception means everything. Perception is why Hillary lost. You know, I mean, mostly perception, you know? It didn't matter whether the things that people were saying were actually true about her. Some things were, some things weren't. But the perception is she was this terrible person. So, she lost, because perception matters. And right now, there's this perception that anything that's t to the left of George Bush is communism. People saying that, that, <laughs> that, that Joe Biden is a communist, or he's a communist puppet, or the, the Democrats, are, they're, they're, they're communists. Look out, communists. It's like, oh my God, the Democrats are already on, on even on the fucking left. There, there, there's a, there's a, there's a handful, but the ones with any sort of power, yeah, they, they're, they're, they're not on the left. They're, they're neoliberals. You know, to, to be somewhat on the left, you, you want to have, you, you need to want to have serious regulations on capitalism. But all these people who are just under this impression that, you know, uh, Biden is a communist or he's a communist puppet. Look out, everyone, China, China's going to take over, everyone. They're going to, to try to tear apart our society so uh, they can come in and swoop in and take over and it's going to be authoritarianism all around. And you know what? You know, there, there's truth to the notion that if we get divided enough, you know, that united we stand, divided we fall. Yes, there's some truth to that. But that doesn't mean that it's, it's some attack from China. It doesn't mean that uh, any bit of uh, questioning of, of our society is, is just a, a communist attack. But what do you do against people who think this way? No amount of facts, no, no amount of explaining, no amount of history, nothing. Nothing will change these people's minds. So it seems there's eventually going to be a time where these people won't allow us to go any, any more to the left. These people will, yeah, hold, hold us all hostage, essentially. 
telling us, no, you're, you're not going to change this country. Doesn't matter what the change is. If it's, if it's to the left, uh, and then, then no. That's, that seems to be the, the, what seems to be coming up. And uh, that's why I mentioned the Civil War. Will it actually be considered a civil war? I don't know. Will it actually have a, a, a designated start and end? I don't know. And what would be the outcome? I mean, who would be surrendering? What would they be surrendering? What would the other people be conquering? I don't know. Do they, do they want some sort of social victory? You're, you're winning the uh, cultural war? You have the most guns, you win? What does it mean? What would the outcome be? Would there be laws? Would we get rid of anti-discrimination laws? What would change? I think I've run out of things to say, so I guess I'll end the video. This kind of went all over the place, and that's okay. Thanks for watching.